Hi, I'm Sarah Holland. I'm an energy engineer and I'm here to tell you a story called The Fairy and the Engineer. On the edge of a small wood is a special workshop where people bring things from home they no longer want, like furniture, bikes and kitchen utensils. Here, a small team of people use their engineering skills to make amazing new things out of other people's junk. One of those people is a boy called Gus, who helps there during his school holidays. Around the back of the workshop grows a beautiful great oak tree that is home to many fairies, including Trixie. Trixie is kind and hardworking, but sometimes careless. Trixie met Gus one lunchtime when he had ventured into the wood for a picnic. Over time, they became best friends. Gus has a great imagination and loves making things for them to play with. And with a tap of her wand, Trixie will transform it into a magical experience. Her favourite was an old bin and funnel that Gus had transformed into a space rocket and by magic they had zoomed round the earth. But on one special day, there was no time for playing. Trixie sat on a toadstool, swinging her legs, thinking about the fairy light festival taking place that evening. It was the most important event of the fairy calendar, when they celebrated the sun waking the woodland from its winter sleep. This year, for her hard work, the fairies had rewarded Trixie with the honour of creating the festival's light display. She was so proud of herself and had worked incredibly hard on a spell for a fabulous display of light that will dazzle and dance through the leaves of the great oak tree. Only six more hours to go, said Trixie, suddenly twirling round in excitement. She landed clumsily on a toadstool and lost grip of her wand, which spun through the air and fell to the ground with a crack. Oh no, Trixie cried. I can't perform the spell with a broken wand. Hot, angry tears filled her eyes. Oh, I'm so careless. The fairies will never trust me again. I need to fix my wand. What am I going to do? That's it, she declared. Get Gus. Trixie flew through the trees, ducking branches, dodging leaves, and finally through the open window of Gus's workshop. She landed on the workbench in front of him, barely catching her breath before launching into what had happened. So will you, Trixie gulped. Will I what, said Gus, frowning. Mend my wand, please. You're great at fixing things. And Trixie offered Gus the broken wand. I'm sorry, Trixie. Your wand needs magic to fix it. I can't do magic. Trixie released a loud sob and tears trickled down her cheeks. Don't worry, said Gus. You don't need magic to engineer the most fantastical light display. Trixie dabbed her ears and wiped her nose. Really? She asked. Really, said Gus. Gus brought out a stunning assortment of repaired lights. These lights work from electricity, he said. Taking her outside, he pointed to a large solar panel on the workshop roof. During the day, this panel generates electricity from sunlight. We store the electricity in a battery, so your lights will still work when it's dark. And we could use time switches to control the lights to come on at different times, suggested Trixie. Brilliant idea, agreed Gus. Trixie had to work quickly. Grabbing a string of golden star-shaped lights, she flew to the great oak tree and spun them through its branches. She flew back to the workshop and plugged the lights into its time switch. The red light on the time switch flashed from red to green, showing that the lights were connected properly. Phew, she said. Next, Trixie threaded the heart-shaped lights through the tree canopy and hung lights shaped like starbursts delicately on flowers beneath the toadstools. Back at the workshop, Trixie plugged the last string of lights into its switch with a satisfying click. And the red light on the switch flashed to green. Wait, shouted Gus. Trixie followed Gus's gaze to one of the time switches whose light was now flashing red. Oh no, it's the switch to the lights on the great oak tree. They're not connected properly. Something must have gone wrong. She raced back to the tree and saw the light connector that had become loose. 
that's it, she said, and clicked it back just in time. A great big smile spread across Trixie's face as the fairies shouted, three, two, one, followed by sounds of oohs and ahs and gasps of awe at her light display. Gus closed the door to the workshop and headed to the car park where his mum was waiting to take him home. He gazed at the display of sparkling and shimmering explosions of colourful light that dazzled and danced through the great oak tree. Well done, Trixie, he whispered into the night air. You've engineered a magical light display 